I have an obsession. A cringy obsession, if you will. I am obsessed with skinwalker videos on the internet. Like, all the videos of, my dog is a skinwalker, or is that a skinwalker? Is this like a deer acting weird? I can't get enough of them. I can't stop watching them. I think I've seen everyone on YouTube, like, thrice over. Now I, now, I love these videos. I mean, trust me, I really do. But what if I told you that those aren't real skinwalkers? Now, obviously, they're fake. But what I mean is, that's not even how skinwalkers look or are or act or anything, really. Usually, the only thing these videos get right is that they take place in Arizona. And that's at best. But if these videos are so far from what actual skinwalkers are, then what is a skinwalker? Well, to answer that question, I traveled over a thousand miles to Flagstaff, Arizona to answer some of these questions about what skinwalkers really are. Also, I did have to rush this script a little bit to film it on time because I filmed it while on family vacation and that was a specific week, so I had to film this on that specific week. And because of that, I got a little, a little rushed. And there's also another video that I was trying to do first, but then I had to stop that to move on to this one. So it's just, it's a whole thing. So that's why it took me so long to, to, to upload again. So, there. Yeah, that's how you know. Also, don't expect this level of traveling in the future. It was really just a coincidence that I happened to be going to Arizona at the same time that I was making this video. So, in the future, traveling is going to be like I went to the state park down the road. Just, just so you know, I'm not... I don't have the money to be traveling cross-country for these videos. But, anyway, let's get back to the video. Let's start by addressing the problem. The internet has taken skinwalkers and morphed them into something entirely different from what they actually are. Because according to TikTok, Skinwalkers are shape-shifting monster beings that will transform into your dog and watch you sleep at night. And while that's a cool horror trope, for sure, it's not a skinwalker. Skinwalkers have been misunderstood and falsely named on the internet since... Well, since the internet had people on it. I mean, Fleshgate have been misunderstood and misnamed and called skinwalkers for years, and even now people still get confused with the two of them. And I think what gets lost most of this new age warp to skinwalkers is that they are a Native American legend. Like, they're not just some cryptid monster thing. They're actual stories. They're real folklore from real people. But if that's the case, then maybe skinwalkers are real. I don't know. Watch the video to find out. And leave a like comment and subscribe please if you like the video if you like me then please do all that please but before we get to the skinwalkers let's talk about the culture and tribe they come from the navajo tribe the navajo tribe comes from the four corners area of the united states southwest and they come from the dene people group specifically the southern dene now, the Navajo arrived in that area around 13 to 1400 AD, just seemingly out of nowhere. But to help uncover this mystery, let's look at a tale from the Northern Dene people group, the people who live only a couple thousand miles north. Which is really far away, if you didn't know. The Dene people actually come from the Arctic and boreal regions of Canada and Alaska, being the first people to populate that area. Well, around a thousand years ago, there was a legend from the Northern Dene people of Canada's Northern Territory, which may explain where the Navajo came from. The legend states that a violent and warlike tribe called the Naha lived just across the river valley. Well, one night, out of nowhere, the tribe just up and vanished. And since the Navajo arrived in their modern day home not long after that story takes place, a lot of people believe that the Naha became the Navajo. The Navajo were a very magical tribe. They believed very much in the magic of good and evil, and especially this magic of good and evil in relation to animals. For example, if you were a Navajo shaman, you would practice good magic, drawing powers from animals like deer and elk. Now, if you were not a Navajo shaman, and maybe something else, then you would practice bad magic, drawing powers from animals like coyotes and black bears, 
animals of a more evil nature. I'm gonna be 100% honest, I don't know a lot about Navajo magic or how it works. It's actually really hard to find completely accurate information about a lot of Native American legends on the internet. So if you're Navajo and I got something wrong, then please leave a comment and let me know what I got wrong. I really want to have the most accurate information when it comes to these things. But let's move on. So what are skinwalkers? Well, in short, skinwalkers are people. They're just people who practice forbidden magic. And no, they're not wizards, there's a whole lot more to them than that. Skinwalkers are people who have devoted themselves to evil, practicing spells and spirituality that is forbidden in Navajo culture for being of bad intention and evil for the soul. So now you're probably starting to see why basically every single skinwalker video you've ever seen is fake. Skinwalkers are Navajo magicians who practice evil and bad magic. And while there's not much more to them than that, it's what they do with that magic that makes them especially interesting. And skinwalkers are inherently evil. So if they're people, but they're also inherently evil, then what would make someone become a skinwalker? Someone may become a skinwalker for multiple reasons, but all of these reasons involve purely self-interest. Reasons such as revenge, wealth, or power no one else benefits from you being a skinwalker. Becoming a skinwalker is not an easy process. To become a skinwalker, you have to find someone who is already a skinwalker to mentor you through the process. And this process is a number of trials, with each trial becoming more and more evil than the last, with the last trial being so awful and heinous that it separates you from your humanity. This is usually the murder of a family or loved one or even cannibalism. Either way, you are putting being a skinwalker above everything else in your life. I know I dogged on the TikTok skinwalkers a lot, but there is some truth to that shape-shifting part. Now, skinwalkers don't exactly shape-shift, at least not in the modern Western sense of the term. When a skinwalker shape-shifts, what they really do is they take the pelt of an animal and they wear it. And by wearing it and using their magic, they can draw powers from that animal. So if you wear the pelt of a coyote, for example, you might get a heightened sense of smell. You might be able to run faster or get more agility. You get the picture. Now, some legends do say that the skinwalkers can fully shapeshift into another animal. But from what I've seen, it seems to be a lot more of a spiritual transformation where you're really taking on the spirit of that animal rather than a physical transformation where you just now look like the animal. But then again, I'm not a skinwalker, so who am I to say that y'all can't shapeshift? If you're a skinwalker watching this video, then I don't know. Leave a comment, email me, let me know how that works. Cool. All right, you find yourself in, let's say, northern Arizona outside of Flagstaff, the land in which the Navajo Nation has inhabited for almost a thousand years the land in which the very skinwalkers you fear walk themselves. And let's say you're so unlucky that you encounter one. What do you do? Well, skinwalkers aren't found just anywhere. They're typically found in more wooded areas, areas with lots of grass and lots of cover. Really anywhere where people are common enough, but no one would really know if they were missing. In fact, a forest just like this would be the perfect place to find a skinwalker. The first thing you'll notice when a skinwalker is near you is the entire area going completely dead silent. And I mean dead silent. The chirping of the birds, the rustling of the wind and the trees, all gone. Once the deafening silence rolls in, you will start to hear what sounds like a child crying in the distance, or maybe a loved one calling to you from the woods. The skinwalker will use its voice mimicking abilities to lure you off into the woods, and once it lures you away, it will kill you. And this is if it even has a decency to lure you away. Sometimes it'll just straight up kill you, yo. Skinwalkers are very territorial in the sense that they just don't want you around. Now their MO for killing you is really just cause you were there. Skinwalkers are just inherently violent and evil. And what better way to be violent and evil than to kill every person you see? Now unlike the Flesh Gate or the Wendigo, the skinwalker's not gonna eat you. It's just gonna kill you. But there is something you can use to kill them. And no, it's not a bigger gun. 
necessarily. I'll get to that in a second. But there are two ways to kill a skinwalker. Now, for the none of you watching that are a Navajo shaman, you would use your magic and spells and fight the skinwalker on its own level. I'm guessing 100% of you watching this video are not a Navajo shaman. If you are a Navajo shaman and you're watching this video, then subscribe and leave a comment, like the video, share it with everyone you know to prove me wrong. But for us common folk, the way to kill a skinwalker is white ash. And not by itself, but by dipping a bullet or a blade in it, it can kill a skinwalker. But you have to kill it through the brain or the heart. If you don't hit a vital organ like that, then the skinwalker will just heal itself through whatever dark magic it possesses. Now if you have a gun, then you'll want to shoot the skinwalker through the head or through the heart. If you have a knife, or even cooler a sword, I wish I had a sword, then you'll want to lop its head off or stab it through the heart. And once you've done that, then you'll want to burn the body just for good measure. Fire typically does a good job at destroying things completely. But wait, wait, what about Skinwalker Ranch? Okay, Skinwalker Ranch will get its own video someday. From this video, I'll give you a teeny weeny little itsy bitty history about the ranch. You know what, no, no, not even the ranch, just the land the ranch is on. Because screw you. There's an old Navajo legend from a war they had with the Ute people. Now the Ute people were winning this war, and to stop them from going any farther into the Navajo's land, some Navajo shamans cursed a valley, and, they, and this curse made the valley very pleasing to skinwalkers for them to live there. They called this valley the Path of the Skinwalker. Now, this did lead them to win the war. More importantly, this modern day valley is called Skinwalker Ranch. So what have we learned about skinwalkers? Well, mostly the fact that they're a lot different than what the internet commonly portrays. And especially in the fact that they're not just shape-shifting monster things. They're real people. They're actual people who just practice bad magic and practice the spells and powers of that bad magic. So now hopefully whenever you see Skinwalker videos on the internet, you'll know they're not real. I mean, well, at least most of them. But I mean, Skinwalkers aren't real, right? I don't know. It's really easy to say that these things aren't real because they're not normal. They're not like the normal animals and the normal things that we see in our day-to-day -day life. But who are we to say that there's nothing abnormal in this world? The point of these videos isn't exactly for me to make you believe and whatever I happen to be talking about in the video. This video isn't for you to believe that skinwalkers are real. My next video isn't for you to believe about whatever my next video is about. I just want to make you think that maybe we don't know everything. Maybe there are still things left to discover. I want to put a sense of mystery in the world for you. That maybe and maybe we don't know it all. Maybe there's still things out there. Maybe there are animals and creatures that are beyond what we think is possible. Maybe there's still things left to find in the forest. We just have to go and find them. But with that, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.